Life Babs on the Well, good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring. And my fine wife, Bev, is on a special assignment. Plus, <laughs> the enemy must not like today's teaching because we had real equipment problems. So, anyhow, you're just going to hear me today. I was awake some during the night, praying for those who listened to our calls. I was reminded about a dear friend of ours in the ministry. She's a woman of great faith. She literally spends two to three hours in prayer every morning. And as a beacon of light in the midst of indifference, in some cases, deep darkness. Without question, she operates in the end-time office of the giver. For a number of years, she sowed almost as much as she made. She loves God with all her heart. She's a woman who not only received a clear vision for the valley where she lives, but has acted on it even a great personal sacrifice. Because of her faithful obedience, she's been, well, she's been under an unmerciful attack of the enemy for a long time. You know, I remember once hearing someone say, I think it was Bishop Jake, but someone said, new levels bring new devils. I think Satan has assigned a legion of demons to attack her finances and her commitment. But I have news for the enemy. He doesn't stand a chance, not against this woman of faith, nor against any anybody hearing my voice today. This morning as I was praying for her and each of you, I felt led to pray Psalm 3520. Psalm 3520 in the classic Amplified. I prayed it over our lives. The verse says, Oh, keep me, Lord. And deliver me. Let me not be ashamed or disappointed. For my trust and my refuge are in you. Psalm 35:20. this time in the Message Bible says, Keep watch over me. Keep me out of trouble. And don't let me down when I run to you. Truthfully, we pray for a lot of folks who could and, well, are disappointed. The letters and emails that we read are filled with hurt, even in the midst of expectation. The scripture in Proverbs 13, 12, 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's an absolute fact that if you're doing business, the business of the Lord effectively, the enemy will attack you. Matthew 5, 10, 5, 10, classic amplified Bible. Blessed and happy and enviable, fortunate and spiritually prosperous in the state in which the born again child of God enjoys and finds satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of his outward conditions or those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For being and doing right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I remember years ago speaking at what was then First Assembly of God Church in Goldsboro, North Carolina. It's now called Generation Church. I shared how I was always running into the devil every time I sought to do something good for the kingdom of God. After the service, this, <laughs> this man woke up to me with a hint of sarcasm in his voice. He said, I never run into the devil. I smiled and told him, perhaps it's because you're running in the same direction he is. And I laughed, and he kind of laughed, too. Every believer who's about his father's business will be buffeted and face disappointment. Joyce Joyce Meyer, the amazing author, speaker, said, Depression begins with disappointment. When disappointment festers in our soul, it leads to discouragement. Great quote. You know, the key is not why we have disappointments, but how we respond to it. Our response will determine our divine destiny and thwart the enemy's plans for our lives. Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, said, the size of your success is measured by the strength of your desire. The size of your dream 
and how you handle disappointments along the way. As we were preparing for today's call, the Lord led us to several scriptures. We believe he wants to be in the forefront of our minds today and truthfully in the days that follow. His heart's desire is to encourage us now and every day. By the way, do you know how to tell people who need to be encouraged? You can tell it every time, every time. How do you know when people need to be encouraged? You find somebody that's breathing. (laughs) Because if they're breathing, they need encouragement. Here are seven things to know about disappointment. Number one, when you get serious about finding God, you'll make sure you won't be disappointed. Jeremiah 29, 13, 29, 13, Message Bible. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree, I'll turn things around for you. I'll bring you back from all the countries into which I drove you. God's decree, bring you home to the place from which I sent you off in exile. You can count on it. Even though things may not be going the way you want or think they should, the New Living Translation of Jeremiah 13 in part offers a very clear course of action for every believer when it says, if you look to me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. The first step to turning things around is when we look to him. Number two, you'll be rewarded instead of disappointed. Proverbs 23, verses 17, 18, and 19. 23, 17 through 19 in the New Living Translation. Don't envy sinners, but always continue to fear the Lord. You will be rewarded for this. Your hope will not be disappointed. My child, listen and be wise. Keep your heart on the right course. You will be rewarded. Scripture doesn't say you might be, you could be, you should be. You ought to be. Scripture says your faithfulness, your fear of the Lord, your trust in him will be rewarded. Can somebody say hallelujah? Number three. Our faith will keep us from being disappointed. In Psalm 22.5, 22.5, Amplified Classic Bible, they trusted in, leaned on, and confidently relied on you. And we're not ashamed or confounded or disappointed. The word is very clear. When we put our trust in him, make his promises our own and seek his presence, he will never let us be disgraced disappointed. Number four, God won't let us down. God won't let us down. Psalm 31.1, 31.1, New Living Translation. Oh, Lord, I've come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me, for you do what is right. The Message Bible Translation in part says, don't let me down. Dr. Charles Stanley, great pastor from Atlanta, he said, our Heavenly Father understands our disappointment, suffering, pain, fear, and doubt. He is always there to encourage our hearts and help us understand that he's sufficient for all of our needs. When I accepted this as an absolute truth in my life, I found that my worrying stopped. Well, great advice from Dr. Stanley. Number five, God will never leave you nor forsake you. We have the confidence, the assurance from the one person in our lives who can't lie that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrews 13.5, 13.5 in part says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's another hallelujah. Number six, our expectations will not be disappointed. Romans 9, 33. Romans 9, 33. Classic Amplified Bible. And he who believes in him 
who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him, shall not be put to shame or disappointed in his expectations. Wow. It's very clear when we obey his word, hold fast to our confession to the word, then, as it says in Romans 10, 11, contemporary English version, no one who has faith will be disappointed. That's talking about you, my brother, my sister. Number seven, God will always answer when we call for his help. Romans 10, 11 through 13. Romans 10, 11 through 13. In the message Bible, removes all doubt when it says, Scripture reassures us, no one who trusts God like this, heart and soul, will ever regret it. It's exactly the same no matter what a person's religious background may be. The same God for all of us, acting the same incredibly generous way to everyone who calls out for help. Everyone who calls, help, God gets help. Hallelujah. Now, at this very moment on this Saturday morning, you may be going through the fire, but take heart. God does not want you disappointed or living in regret. Your faith will not be disappointed. You'll be rewarded for your obedience to his word. God doesn't want us disappointed, and truthfully, neither do we. Do your part. Hear him. Seek him. Take refuge in him, and he will faithfully perform the things that he's promised you. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father will never let you down. He'll never let you down when you turn to him for help. Romans 4, 5, and 6. Romans 5, verses 4, 5, and 6. 5, verses 4 through 6. New Living Translation. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he, was, he has given us the Holy Spirit. To fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Hallelujah. See, God's love keeps us from being disappointed. And one more thing. Don't let the enemy make you feel that you're all alone in your battle. See, we pray for every person on these calls. Some of you it shows only shows the phone number, not a name. So we pray for that, whoever has that phone number. We might, oh, get this. We may not know who you are, but God does. And he's the one who really counts. That gives you something to think about on this Saturday or whenever you hear the replay of this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be on the lookout for a letter we mailed you last week. Outside it says four words that have changed 2019, the remainder of it for you. We're uh, one more day after today and when the last six months of this year. We're praying and believing it's going to be the greatest six months of your life. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Hallelujah. Be in prayer for our friend Yvette. Damage really come against her. Pray for her. Hallelujah. Well, if you've been blessed by the teaching, go to heraldhearing.com. By the way, let me say one other thing before I tell you that. I got a message for the enemy. Boo, devil, boo. <laughs> he thought the technical stuff would mess us up today, but God's been glorified. And I know he's terrified by the scripture and the word we share. And as I was going to say, if you've been blessed by the teaching, go to heraldhearing.com at the top where it says, sow a seed. Just ask God what seed it have you sow. Do what he says. That's all we'll ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.